Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this will be a demonstration of ANSYS Ice Pack and how to do electronics cooling really fast. So today, most electronics cooling problem starts with a CAD model. So we're going to use ANSYS Space Claim to prepare that model for analysis. The big challenge of electronics cooling is that typically the geometry is very complex. You have multiple boards, lots and lots of components, grills, heat sinks, fans, etc. So to treat a model like that efficiently, we need some specialized tools. And Space Claim and combined with ice pack is just the right tool to solve this problem quickly. First of all, space claim allows you to quickly clean up the geometry. So we can go ahead and, for example, get rid of the heat sinks on top of this chassis with a fill operation. Then we can start simplifying this model and preparing it for analysis. For example, we can select, uh, there's, there's some grills here. So I'm going to work from the outside inwards here. Under the work, workbench tab, we can specify that this surface has grills on it. And it will create a rectangular box where it thinks the grill is, and that's how we need for this surface here. Then we want to simplify the chassis. So let's go ahead and do a simplify. And we can um, do a cuboid fit of the chassis components. And at any time, we can go and show just the non-ice pack objects. So these are the things that are still to be converted to ice pack objects. We're going to get rid of, get rid of this heat sink here because we're going to use some parametric um, operations to model heat sink and get, some, uh, get an idea of how things behave when we change the size and shape of heat sinks. Here we have a fan, and we're going to select uh, one of the hubs, and that then creates these uh, fan objects. Okay. These fans are no longer needed. have a, a few things here. So we can first uh, define this PCB. This, PV, this, PV, this PCB is not a simple board, so we're going to use a polygonal fit. And it's extruded in the z-axis. So when we click on that, it turns this PCB into a polygon. And then we have some blocks and boxes remaining. So we'll do uh, simplify, um, turn them into cuboids and cylinders. And I think that's it. We can use the grill object or the CAD to model the grill. In this case, we're going to keep the grill object because this allows us to change the percentage of opening very easily, and that allows us to do optimization. So what we did here is we moved the grill object and then deleted the cat object. All right, so we still have the grill in front. Um, these other boxes, so surfaces will be, will be accurately modeled. Probably don't need this little piece here. So now we have a model that's ready for analysis. Uh, the components have been converted into ice pack objects, so ice pack will recognize what they are. And now we can start working on the ice pack portion of this project. Drag and drop an ice pack onto our space claim geometry, and we can bring the model in, and it will be prepared for analysis. Okay. You can see that we have all of the components defined, and it knows that these are fans and casings. So there's a few things we can do here. Um, we have some regular fan sizes. And if we want to adjust the fan, you can see that we can put in various properties for flow rate, pressure. You can do a nonlinear fan curve or fixed flow rate. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, import some, bring in some fans from our library. So let's look at fans. And there's a large number of different size of fans over here. Uh, for example, this fan is roughly the right size as the ones we have. And the nice thing about this is that it will have the right um, characteristics already defined. So I'm going to add a couple of those things in there. So now we have two more fans. If we look at the fans we created here, it's got already a 
uh, fan curve predefined by the manufacturer, so we know that it, it's going to behave appropriately. Uh, this fan will be a YZ fan. We'll use the align tools to align the center of this fan to the fan from the CAD. To here. And then we can adjust this one to also YZ. We're going to line it up uh, along the center. Okay, so we got two fans attached to the grill, so we don't need these uh, component 11 or 12 anymore. Now the fans right now are on the inside of the casing, so we want to move this to the outside, and that's easily done here. So we can grab this fan in the y axis, in the x axis, we want this to start on the outside. Okay, so now our fans are correct. Let's take a look at our grill. So this is the, the grill that was defined for us. Um, right now the free area ratio is 0.45. It tells us uh, what the loss coefficient is. We can look at different types of uh, resistance types, whether it's thin vents, bare metal wire screens, or two plane screens. So, um, different other, many different other options to characterize the two, but we'll leave it as default. So we have a fan here. Remember, we removed the heat sink, so now we want to put a heat sink in there. And the benefit of adding a heat sink manually here, especially a detailed heat sink, is that we can control the number of fins, the size of the fins, and all the rest of it very easily. So this heat sink is oriented in the XY direction, and we can just uh, put it on top of this uh, this package here. So the Z is going to be on the top surface. The, the X will start over here, go over here, and the Y will end over here and start over here. Okay. Inside, we have some packages and, and such, but the nice thing about the heat sink here is now we can uh, parameterize and adjust the thickness and the, the fin count. So maybe we want uh, eight fins and we want the overall height to be a little bit higher, 10 centimeters. And it's definitely pointing in the wrong direction. So let's uh, adjust the adjust the orientation of our heat sink. And this allows us to model simplified heat sinks. We can easily create more complex heat sinks, heat sinks from CAD, but then running parametric analysis on that becomes more challenging. So let's look at our package here. Uh, so this is our APU die. I'm going to have this to pump out, let's say, 20 watts. And we can go in and assign all the rest of the materials to here is the PCB. Now the PCB solid material, I'll set it to FR4. We have various ways of modeling boards more accurately by including the copper content and assigning uh, properties. You can also specify a PCB here, a printed circuit board. And we have um, a fully set up simulation. We can go in and change the properties of some of these components. Before we start the simulation, we want to use the problem setup wizard to define what's going to be in this analysis. It'll be a force flow problem with a, some turbulence added in. And once that's done, we can go ahead and start the analysis. I'll try to run this for 100 iterations. We do want to parallelize this. So run on four cores. Let's go ahead and run the simulation. All right, the simulation is completed. We can review the results. Look at the temperature for each of the components here. The maximum components for some of the boards and packages goes up to about 62 degrees. 
uh, we can plot the temperature. And you can slide this up and down to look at different locations. We can also take a look at the velocity or the speed. Right, so you can see the way the flow comes out of the fan and impinges on the heat sinks. And we can run this for longer to, for it to fully converge. Uh, we can do monitor plots to ensure that the temperatures are correct. So let's deactivate this. Now we can see what happens when we change the size and, of the heat sink and, and maybe the amount of temperature uh, inputted. So let's go find our heat sink here. Heat sinks becomes very easy to parameterize in space in uh, ice pack. Uh, we can specify, for example, the number of, of fins, fin count. So just putting a little um, a dollar sign in front of it turns this into a parameter. We can make the overall height of this uh, a parameter. one centimeter. So if we adjust the size of the fins, that could be of interest. Let's see what are the impacts of adjusting the resistance free area ratio of the grill. Okay, so we have the same fan. We can perhaps adjust the sizing of the fan and uh, maybe adjust the, the fan curves a little bit, but I'm going to leave that this, the, um, set up as default. So once that's done, we can start looking at uh, adding some, uh, so we have a couple of input, three input parameters now, the size of the fin and the free area ratio here, and we can also add in the um, some output parameters. So we certainly want the global temperature to be an output parameter. So I think that's the only one we want to use. Uh, maybe I'll add one more on the die itself. We can maybe ad adjust the, the die power level. So we'll do a power to see what kind of, uh, how much energy we can get rid of in this model and keep it below a certain temperature, uh, to turn certain die power. So once this is done, I prefer to use the workbench optimization method. So we got four input parameters, one output parameter, export this to workbench, and we're done. So once we have that export to workbench, we have a parameter set with a set of input parameters and our output parameter um, that's not defined yet. <clears throat> Workbench has a nice set of uh, response surface optimization tools, which I like to use to e explore the design. So let's say we have some uh, functions we want to try. So the fin count, we want to vary this anywhere between 4 and, say, 16. Uh, height, sure, 0 0.005 to 0 0.2, so 5 to 2 centimeters. I want to adjust the free area ratio between, let's say, 2 and uh, 0.8. And power, we want to investigate what happens when we have a 10-watt power source versus a 40-watt power source. So this one allows me to do a preview of the data here. I guess this will generate a design experiment. Now, the thing with this is that the fin count needs to be an integer. You can see that all of my, it, it doesn't make sense to have 5.78. Seven, uh, fins. So instead of using a central composite approach, I'm going to do this as a custom approach, and I'm just going to um, put things as near to where the values are, but now they're integers. And now the simulation will run properly. We can adjust the fin height, grill, and the power as, uh, as uh, decimal values. So
when I hit run here, it's going to go through all 25 simulations and report back on the temperature of each. Now that the simulation has finished, we have 25 sets of data. We can then do some processing to see what the data can tell us about what's happening. So we can do a response surface fit. This will provide us with a equation that will interpolate across all of the data points that we've generated. We can look at how sensitive a particular um, temperature is to fin count, to fin height ratio, uh, grill ratio, and power. Also look at it in, in 3D. So this uh, response surface looks very uneven. It doesn't look as, like a smooth response surface. Uh, we probably should do additional simulations to further refine these type of response surfaces. Uh, the method that we use to characterize response surface is a minimal set using the central composite approach. So we certainly want to, to get accurate results. We would want to do some additional optimization. Uh, let's take a look at the, the optimization. We can select certain constraints and uh, for one, we want to minimize the temperature, but we probably also want to minimize the, the fin height and minimize the fin count so that we can get away with a cheap uh, heat sink. We'll go with a screening method and we'll pull off, uh, let's say, 3,000 designs. Okay, so this is a much more fuller trade-off plot. We got a Pareto front here, the minimum temperature. Uh, and for samples, we want uh, we have between 10 and 40 watts. So let's say we want to go. Uh, first of all, we want to ensure that our temperature is low. So let's get rid of anything over 50 degrees. We want to have a, a high power. So maybe we want 30 watts of power, potentially in this model. Uh, and if I click on one of these, it tells me that to do this type of model, to get this performance, we need a 37 millimeter fin with about 13 fins. And that allows us to, to do keep the temperature under 50 degrees and have a uh, power of, of 30. So this gives us a lot of options of looking through the model, trying to pick out trade-offs. If we have 20 watts, as we mentioned earlier, we can filter out those with higher power. And now we can reduce the number of fins. So let's say we want a minimum fin of, um, we can we have a couple options here from the simulation. One is a 11 fin, 0 0.1 millimeter off version, or we can have four fins, and it's a, a much thicker fin, fin height. So a lot of different options available in this simulation and by doing design of experiments and understanding the trade-offs this gives us a lot more data certainly to do this accurately we want to refine our response surface by adding in uh, in our response surface we can do verification points and refinement points add in various designs to uh, better quantify our design space and that will allow us to pick the correct design and use optimization to understand the trade-offs between our various options. That's a quick example of how to do a ice pack simulation for electronics cooling, taking a modern CAD model and turn it into an ice pack ready simulation. Then we did some extra design optimization to look at how changing the heat sink sizing and various other parameters affect, allow us to optimize the model. So thank you for your time. And please, if you enjoy the video, please like it and visit us at singularityinge.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.